Social media is all around us and has allowed for social relationships to move from the real world into cyberspace. It's not always a happy ending though. And while social networks are not responsible for the deaths on this list, the events which led to the confrontations that ended in death were done over social networks. So join us as we count 10 crazy deaths from social media. Number 10. Matthew Dubois 16-year-old Matthew Dubois had already had a serious rap sheet which included residential burglary and unlawful possession of a firearm when he took things to the next level by shooting and killing his girlfriend Mikara Sanders. The incident happened on New Year's Eve over a message posted on her MySpace page by another boy. For this crime, Dubois was sentenced to nearly 14 years in prison. Number 9. Tori Lynn Emery Tori Lynn Emery and Daniel Booth had what some may call a Facebook beef, but unfortunately it took a very bad turn as a heated encounter at McDonald's turned into a high-speed car chase with Emery ramming her car repeatedly into a vehicle that Booth was a passenger in. After running a red light, the car carrying Booth was struck by a dump truck, leaving her in critical condition and killing her driver, Alicia Abernathy. Reports claim that their personal issues began from being romantically linked to the same imprisoned man. Emery was charged with second degree murder. Number 8. John Albert Gardner III John Albert Gardner III is a registered sex offender who created a fake MySpace account to communicate with high school student Chelsea King. After some time, he decided to take things off the internet. He attacked King as she was out jogging, raped her, murdered her, and hid her corpse in a San Diego park. Gardner set up his MySpace account nine months before ending his parole bid for molesting a 13-year-old girl in 2000. Gardner is now sitting on two life sentences without parole role, and so he should be. Number 7. Jameg Blake It's always difficult when two friends take a liking to the same woman, but usually it doesn't end quite as badly as it did here. Childhood friends Jameg Blake and Kwame Dancy had a falling out over liking the same woman. After an exchange of a series of heated tweets, Blake shot Dancy in the neck with a shotgun. This act of violence resulted in a murder charge for Blake to which he first pleaded not guilty, but after the prosecutors offered him a plea deal, he later changed his mind. Number 6. Scott Humphrey Scott Humphrey was sent to jail after he repeatedly punched his friend Richard Rovetto in a cab on the way back from a guy's night out. Why was Humphrey so upset? Evidently, Rovetto had poked Humphrey's girlfriend on Facebook. Rovetto claimed that he didn't know the woman was Humphrey's girlfriend. The punches caused Rovetto to bleed profusely. He died when Humphrey pushed him to the ground, causing him to hit his head on the pavement. Humphrey fled the scene, but later turned himself in, admitted to manslaughter, and was jailed for four years, four months. Number 5. Karina Roberts I've read some messed up stuff researching video ideas, but this is definitely up there with some of the worst I've seen. Heather Megan Snively responded to a Craigslist ad posted by Karina Roberts in search of baby clothes for her unborn child. After a week of communication, the soon-to-be mother was tricked by Roberts to come into her home, where she battered Snively with a collapsible police baton. She then used a sharp instrument to cut the unborn baby from Miss Snively's abdomen. An autopsy showed that the baby boy, who did not survive, had been torn from Miss Snively's womb. For months before the killing, Roberts told neighbours that she was pregnant, going as far as buying a stroller, baby formula and parenting magazines. Roberts is now serving life in prison. Number 4. Edward Richardson Sarah Richardson decided she had had enough of her husband Edward's excessive cocaine use as well as his refusal to have children with her. So she decided to split up with him and changed her Facebook status to single. Edward didn't like this one bit and decided to get revenge. The 41-year-old smashed his way into his in-law's home before using a carving knife to kill Sarah in the bedroom of her parents. The attack was so vicious, some of the stab wounds broke the 26-year-old's ribs and punctured her liver and aorta. After murdering Sarah, Richardson drove to a field and used the same knife to slash his wrists and throat, but he survived. Edward Richardson is now serving a life sentence of at least 18 years. Number 3. Calvin Lawson 
Ex-con Calvin Lawson learned that rumours of his infidelity had been sent to his girlfriend on MySpace by Caroline Wimmer. He became furious and strangled the woman to death with a hairdryer cord. Lawson had previously been arrested in 2006 for punching, choking and striking a woman with a hammer, but he was never convicted and set free. Lawson was found guilty of second degree murder and is now serving 25 years in prison. Number 2 Wayne Forrester Another murder over changing the Facebook relationship status. Wayne Forrester wasn't particularly pleased when his wife Emma changed her status from married to single a few days after he moved out. Drunk and high on cocaine, Wayne beat his wife, tore chunks of hair from her head and repeatedly stabbed her in the head and neck with a kitchen knife and meat cleaver. Police found him sitting on his porch covered in blood. Wayne pleaded guilty in court, reducing his sentence to a minimum of 14 years. Number 1 Houston Schlicker Houston Schlicker posted some suicidal threats on his MySpace page. Because of this, his father removed his internet privileges. This caused Schlicker to lose his mind and he blew his father's head off with a 12-gauge shotgun. Schlicker found the weapon in his garage and admitted to nearly killing himself, but changed his mind and aimed the weapon at his dad, claiming he had had enough of his rules. Schlicker was given a 20-year sentence.